You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Catfish After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Catfish After Show. Truth. You better sing it, Jessica. <laughs> this was your idea. No, I want to be hype. No, I'm depressed. Yeah. No, I'm depressed. Oh, my God, but like, love does hurt. It just hurts. It does. It truly does. Love is. does hurt. Couldn't have said it better myself. What's up, guys? You're watching the AfterBuzz TV after show for the Catfish season three finale. I can't believe it's over. No. It's here. I'm Sterling Cates, and with me are these beautiful, lovely ladies. Hey, guys, I'm Kelly McInerney. I'm Jesse Owen. And I'm Kiki Ayers. Yay! I, well, not yay. I'm kind of, you know, a little sad that this is our last one. Um, but before we get into it, we have Bianca and Brogan. Um, but let's talk about Maria Menounos' new book, It's the Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. If you haven't already started your summer diet, uh, you know, you're getting a late start, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, better late than never, Still I always one say. one more month. Yeah, yeah still two, one more month. one and a half. And, you know, it's really all about having a, an active lifestyle year-round, looking good, mm -hmm. looking fresh yeah. all the time. It's got a lot of really great recipes, interviews with celebrities, the whole thing. It's super realistic, really good read. So be sure to check that out, you guys. All right, let's get into this episode. So we're talking about Bianca. She's 20 years old from Durham, North Carolina, which is five minutes where I'm from. Do you which know is her? kind of scary. I don't know her. It's, I don't. She I'm was from, a pretty cool chick, too, so that's yeah, sad. I know. Well, I'm, <laughs> believe believe know. it or not, I'm from an even smaller town than she is, mm -hmm. um, right outside of Durham. Like, it's like the small town outside of Durham, which is considered larger than <laughs> the town <laughs> I'm from. So just, you know, let that simmer there. Mm -hmm. Anyways, she's super into body modification, has lots of tattoos and piercings, which is cool. She looks great. I thought she looked like a really cool friend. Yeah. I, I yeah. wish I knew her when I lived there. Um, but so she, anyway, she's been talking to this Brogan girl who also shares a similar interest um, with body modification. Mm -hmm. And they seem like they'd be really cute together. Yeah. yeah. You guys think, I mean, well, I was like, I oh, think they're so. actually a pretty cute couple. Um, but they have been talking for five months before Brogan disappears completely. She never hears from her. Her um, accounts are deactivated, everything. So absolutely for gone. a year right yeah, yeah for a whole year what did you guys think about when she brought that up in her email it's just like yeah and then i never heard from her again well i, I saw the commercials already so i kind yeah, of so you kind of know <laughs> yeah i taking off <clears throat> i thought it was ridiculous that she never like said anything like they just continued on after a year yeah I yeah that I, was very weird if i was bianca i would be like um so, where you been? So, where'd you go? Like, yeah, because yeah. if you're my friend and I don't hear from you within, like, 40 hours, I'm like, oh, so, like, where were you? Like, who, yeah. you've been gone for, like, Who were you years. with? Yeah, who were you with? Let what alone, you doing? Let alone that kind of friend, you know? They were, like, right. close. Oh, that's a whole right. if, you're, if, you're <laughs> if you're romantically involved with someone right. for that long of time and then all of a sudden you just never hear from them, from them again, when they come back a year later, you're going to want answers. Yeah. Yeah. But on the same side, you don't want to scare them away again. You know, and I think that's more of where she was coming from. She was like, oh, she's back. I got to yeah. keep her here. But if you so know it, you didn't do anything wrong, like, it's on them to right. at least apologize yeah. and give an explanation. I can't believe she just went on with the conversation like everything was good. Right. I completely agree. But regardless, she came back. Yes. They still carried on as if nothing had ever happened. And she even said there was still that connection there. So obviously these two people have something, have an emotional connection if not anything else since they never video chatted because she felt like it was awkward an awkward situation and, and then she disappeared right when she was yeah gonna, getting comfortable with right. the idea yeah exactly so um and but this but bianca wants to travel she wants to play music she's a musician and she's hoping that brogan can be the person that kind of goes on this journey with her mm -hmm. but you know you're leaving a small town you don't want to be on the road alone and 
You want it's a lonely to, road, man. It's a love, lonely love road. hurts, and love, <laughs> never mind. Anyways, so um, so then they decide to take this. That was all we learned from the emails. That's very specific email. And um, then Max brings up. So they they're skyping Bianca and my and Max. I mean not Max, but Neve brings up that Salita Ebanks, the supermodel. She is gorgeous. Wants to be involved in the show. Because why not? It's a season yeah. finale. Why I not? Go, think, go big. I think that's something nice that they might want to like start doing in future episodes just to give it a little variety, have that other opinion, have someone there to help and, you know, maybe speed up the process. Next and fix ta- Max's yeah. hair. Next time, David <laughs> Spade, though. I would yeah. have rather have yes. David Spade than Selena yeah. Evans. Right. You gotta yeah. take baby steps, though. You gotta yeah. I really do, th- and we'll talk about it more in the episode, but I really do think that she provided you know, more of an emotional support for the, mm-hmm. for the people being catfish, And also, she d- d- a completely different perspective. Because we she, always see what Max and Neve think. Yeah, and she's super observant. She called it. Like, yeah. boom. Like, oh, I know what's going on. Oh, that, that. And, and she shed so- that tough love, too. Right, mm-hmm. she did. Yeah. So, yeah, she definitely kept it real. But, um, so they asked Bianca if it's okay if she comes along. Obviously, why wouldn't you? Can you imagine if she said no? And they're yeah. like, oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so they go to Bianca to kind of see w- what the situation is. I could have told you this, but it's a very small town. Not the most accepting place. It really depends on where you are in North Carolina. I was more in a, a liberal part of North Carolina, but, you, you know, it's just very different there. Um, she, Like she said, there's not many gay people where she lives. Um, and so finally she found this connection with someone online with Brogan, and so that's why she kind of – dove in head first there um and then so they so, so she shows some pics um and there's the pics there's the pic of her legs oh, that she had sent bianca that say sweetheart um and they have the flowers and everything and even neve was like wait are those her legs because they didn't really match the face did you guys think i don't know it was weird i thought it was weird that they <laughs> like put so much emphasis on that picture and i was like she must be like a little heavier like yeah. below the waist yeah. or something just well we learn much. later why they put emphasis on that picture it was like yeah, foreshadowing exa- kind yeah, of yeah, yeah yeah exactly um but then at that point salita mentions that this is bianca's kind of way out is brogan is going to be this ride or die person for her that's her excuse to get out of this small town mm-hmm. which i mean i'm right there with her i got out of that small town thank god yeah. um <laughs> But just just mentioning briefly, Max is so salty about yeah. Salita being there, and like I think he's really like concerned that she's gonna take his job. Isn't he married to like a supermodel or something though? I don't I know who was. is he married to. It doesn't matter though because but, she was doing great. And yeah, he was jealous. He was like, yeah, he was super. He's jealous. already starting to get more and more into the spotlight with these episodes. People are now like, oh, that's just Neve's cameraman. They actually like name him now, and yeah. now she comes in gorgeous and like calling things, and he's just like, you know, he's yeah. intimidated. It was it was really it was funny cute, though. though. Yeah. yeah. So um, they begin the search process for who this broken person is. So the first thing they do is search the name. Um, it comes up in Iowa, which did they know that already? I I think it wasn't surprising no, information. They didn't, so I think that it didn't they, come up in Iowa. It came up in uh, England. No, 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 the, no. The name. The first thing they did was the first in thing Davenport, they did was the Iowa. pictures, and then Spokio. Was the not, second thing they did was the image search. Billet. No matches with yeah. any of them. The third thing they did the phone number in Spokio. Nothing came up. Then they did the name in Spokio. Nothing came up. Which stinks because that's usually their thing. The right. phone number. Exactly. They're three steps in and haven't discovered anything. Mm-hmm. So then the fourth thing they do is they do the Google search. Um, and it comes up with a blog called An Ever Growing Wonder. And on the and then it was nothing, but then it was there was an HP address that was like who is Brogan? Who the hell is Brogan? Like, a caster. Ca- like a cache or a cache like a um, right. p- page of a deleted page. Of a deleted page, yeah. right. Um so anyways they um search the blog yeah. specifically and on there they find um that it's owned by this person. Chloe Acaster, who's 19 and lives in the UK. Um, she has a boyfriend, Chris, who is labeled as Broski in Brogan's Facebook page. So mm-hmm. she was pretending that her boyfriend, or no, she was just her still in that picture, but you know. The, yeah, the, the boy Her real boyfriend, boyfriend is, is her brother. Her yeah, is the, yeah. the brother from the profile. Um, so. Then they find out, they go to this Chloe's person's Facebook, and it's the same pictures that have been used for Bianca. So it's the same person, all matches up, whatever. 
So they're finding out that it's not, you know, well, it's definitely not who Bianca thinks it is. Yeah. They're not really sure what it is, but it's either this girl living in UK or it's someone pretending to be this girl that's living in England. Yeah, and on the England. blog, though, they find that big picture. Right. They find the picture the leg, of the legs, the, the same pregnant. one, but it's a it's Baby her belly. in a, in a bathtub tub. with a pregnant belly. Yeah. Which makes sense why she disappeared for a year. Right. Which Salida well, called. Like, when they're in the ca- car, Salida's like, hmm, she's probably pregnant, and that guy's probably the baby Datsky da- instead of the broski. Right. She's well, so the thing, smart. She my, got it. Right. Well, she the, the girl did end up being pregnant, but it wasn't even that girl. So I feel like she could have continued being this person for a year, even though the girl that she's pretending to be is pregnant. Yeah, because there's probably older pictures. Right, there's older pictures. She could have sent her anything. And it looks like she knowing. just cropped out the stomach in yeah. the same picture. She yeah. just cropped out the stomach. Yeah. yeah, well, I think the first one was on a bed, it looked like. But I'm not sure. Maybe it wasn't yeah. that tub. I didn't uh, really look at it yeah. that well, even though they tried to make us right. stare at it. <laughs> yeah. so long. Yeah. But anyways, they cut back, um, and they meet Bianca's mom back in, in Durham. And um, she kind of opens up a little bit more and gives us some more insight about how um, living there, such a culture shock. And the story was really touching. Yeah, she's super honest like and open to discuss that big story, like how even she was wrong, kind mm-hmm. of, of calling out her daughter. Yeah, then- she said, I'd rather you be a whore than gay, which that's really big to like just admit to the world that mm-hmm. you said that to your daughter. Yeah. I thought so, too. I thought that was really – that takes a lot of guts, guts yeah. to yeah. – admit that you said something like that to your daughter especially on national television yeah. but yeah. she apologized and everything and then she said you know god made you this way and when you were in my belly i love you unconditionally so you know every she, basically everybody makes mistakes even if you say something sometimes you just say things without thinking them i feel like that's yeah. what she kind of did it's really hard though because you hear the mom like talking about all the stuff that the daughter went through and stuff and i i mean It might have to do with financial situation. You know, maybe she can't get another job somewhere. But if my child was getting bullied that bad and it was somewhere that we had moved, I probably would pick up and go try to move somewhere else. You know, like... Depends on how... Well, we don't really know the circumstances for them moving. And But we do know that she was a Sunday school teacher Mm -hmm. and they wouldn't let her be a Sunday school teacher anymore because of her daughter. Um, They weren't accepted at church. All of these things, and I think that's what sparked her kind of retaliation against it. But mm-hmm. she did, at the end of the day, come to terms with it and express that she wants Bianca to be who she is. Yeah, and, and I thought that I teared up a little bit. That you know, it's sad. It moment. Is her church? She didn't say the name or anything, but it's those people that make people who go to church look bad. Right. Mm-hmm. And exactly. And it's so sickening because I mean, I go to church. Like I, I'm a Christian, whatever, and like. It just, it looks so bad. And especially in the South, it makes the South look worse. Right. It just gives the church a bad reputation when people, you know, because not everyone like that is like that, but that's just And not all churches are like that either. Right, totally. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's terrible because that's your religion. That's something you believe in. Those Mm -hmm. are supposed to be people that accept you. And they're going in there trying to make you have your daughter wear dresses. Even if you take away her sexual orientation, just right. everything they were asking her to do, which is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Well, what I loved about what the mom said is that even though the church that they were attending um, kind of rejected them, mm-hmm. when she when she came to terms with Bianca's sexuality, she she didn't lose faith at all. She's still equally as religious, and she used she was like God made you who you are, even before like even mm-hmm. before you were born, all this stuff. So she never lost that faith, and I thought that was really yeah. just beautiful of her to still keep keep the faith alive well you know? u- yeah ultimately it's not like the god that's doing the wrong thing is the some p- idiots that worship him like you know right it takes it's all just, like, kinds stereotypes and you know it's yeah. just bullies really everywhere and all that on all types of communities yeah whether it's religious racial you know yeah it's, it's all based on interpretation like everybody interprets things differently yeah yeah it's whatever so. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah well, good job, Catfish, for bringing up another topic. <laughs> yeah. But um, so then they asked the mom if they want Bianca to get involved, and she just is, she's a little hesitant. She doesn't want Bianca to get hurt. She seems like a really good protective mother. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. But Bianca's like, well, no, I want answers. Mm-hmm. So they talk to Bianca about what they found and about how it is the same pictures but not the same person. And um, they tell her they found the blog, and they tell her they found the photo of the pregnant belly with the tattooed legs. She gets kind of upset, too. She gets really emotional, yeah. yeah. 
let's go back for a second. The um, article in Ever Growing Wonder, Who the Hell is Brogan Acaster, did we determine that Chloe is the one who wrote that based on yeah, that's her the blog. girl trying yeah, that's to her be blog. Yeah. trying to know. be her? Yeah, they never talked about how Chloe might know about they never tried to contact Chloe yeah, directly. That's international minutes, girl. They yeah. to- <laughs> <laughs> six in the morning. They contacted that island, though. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, but yeah. via <laughs> Skype, like, or yeah. you know, she online. Could, could have sent like a Facebook message, been like, "Hey, can we Skype about it?" I feel like they knew, though. Yeah, I feel like definitely. they knew it yeah. wasn't them. But for me, watching it, I thought it still could be this person in London. Yeah. And so that's when they were like, "Okay, well, do you?" Because then I th- at this time, I thought she was still pregnant. Like, this girl had been pregnant, and that's mm-hmm. why she disappeared. Whatever. And they were like, definitely contact her. And that's when we were watching it, and they were sa- she said, yes, I definitely want to see if it's her. And I was like, hell yeah, a free trip to London. Like, let's do it. I'll go with you. My bags are packed. Um, but as we find out, when Neve calls Iowa. Chloe, it's a girl named Tia in Iowa. Mm-hmm. And at first, I thought it was Chloe lying again. Yeah, I was like, she really I was like, she's lying accent. again. She has a really good American I accent. I was like, maybe Tia is her middle name. And yeah. so <laughs> she was so like willing to give up the name like so quickly. You know, I'm just gonna if I ever get catfish, I'm gonna have a guy pretend to be Neve and call up the person on the phone. Well, now because you I feel it like away. this is Neve from Catfish. <laughs> yeah. Who are you really? Oh yeah, I'm not who I said I was. Yeah, so this is, like, they're really... so open about it sometimes. It's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we don't know if they were contacted beforehand, knowing that they were going to be on the show. And we don't know if that one-minute conversation lasted 20. Yeah. But the production know. was put together very mm-hmm. well, and that's why we all watch it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Good job, Catfish. Um, okay, so after they get off the phone with Chloe and she agrees to participate, they get to Iowa. Tia. Not oh, oh, Tia. What did I say? They get to Chloe. Iowa. Oh, they get to Tia. See? It's Catfish. It's not- Brogan, Tia. Flash- Chloe. Chloe. Too many names. I know. Yeah. Anyways. I'm just, you know, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's late. Um, so anyways, they meet Tia, and they do, a, of course, like a five-minute thing of, is she going to come out? Is she not going to come out? And then they cut to commercial. So after the commercial comes back, um, um, so she says that she kind of got addicted to this fake profile. Um, the first time we see Tia, she doesn't really give us much other than she got addicted. She was updating it too much. It was really easy to kind of get involved with. You could tell, though, she feels, like, bad about it, you know? Oh, I totally thought she felt really guilty. Yeah. I don't even think her intentions were bad. I think she was honestly, like she said, trying to just escape herself. Like, yeah. just be someone normal for a change. Which I'm not saying she's normal, but that's how she felt. Like, she right. felt guarded like she had nobody so being someone else it's easier like I mean okay this is so cliche like I'm an actor so playing someone else sometimes can be easier than you know having to let your true emotions right I've totally heard Mm -hmm. that before so yeah that makes sense um and she talked about how they she found this Chloe person and her pictures on tumblr so and she saw him saw these pictures and it was who she she saw these pictures as who she actually wanted to be and she talked about how she used to be 300 pounds and i guess seeing these pictures of this chloe girl made her well that's how she felt inside Mm -hmm. but didn't look on the outside yeah so that's why she became that person and and she's gone so far to be this person i feel like she's too scared to be like hey i'm not really her. i'm not really her and that's why she came back after a year because um you know, she missed Bianca. It right. wasn't that she missed the person. She just missed contacting Bianca, which I thought was yeah. sweet, kind of. Yeah, she was like, I only reactivated my accounts to get in contact with you. Yeah. I thought about you a lot during this year. We didn't talk. Um, and she realized it was wrong. Now, she says she realized it was wrong, but they've still been talking like nothing happened. So, And she never admitted it. So yeah. maybe she was just trying to find the right time. Yeah. And the part of me wonders, like, what – everything she told her was true because you know they said that they were both into body modification but that girl didn't have any tattoos she had a tongue piercing yeah but that's it maybe she couldn't afford it that's maybe she wanted them but you know i don't know tattoos are expensive man i just wonder how much because they never went into it like how much was true right and if she's going through major weight loss she probably doesn't Mm -hmm. want to get tattoos just yet because you know your body changes i want to know what she did to lose all that weight though 
I'm really interested. She probably read um, the Every Girl's book. Guide to Diet <laughs> and Fitness. Because she looks... I mean, she, I she knew it was going to drop. <laughs> I, I would have never... She might be in there. Open the... <laughs> I would have everyone here somewhere. I would have never guessed she was like 300 pounds. Like, she looks great from, you know, well, yeah. I didn't see everything, but you right. look great, girl. <laughs> yeah. She was 300 pounds. Yeah, yeah. she was. She's, yeah. yeah. She was. Um, yeah, she, I mean, she seems like a nice girl. She seems... You know, like she's trying to become more comfortable with who she really is as yeah. opposed to these profiles she has online. Yeah. Just not the smartest. Yeah. Like, well, she just went about it the wrong way and she yeah. didn't realize I felt it until sad. the end. I felt bad for her. I mean, she seems like a really, you know, she seems really nice. She doesn't, I I really don't feel like this girl had bad intentions. I really think yeah. she really was I attracted to I mean, she's not like Bianca. that kid in the gambling uh, casino thing mm-hmm. waiting, you know, doing it intentionally. I think, yeah. I think she really did have some emotional Problems. baggage yeah. right so that's the first time we see her um bianca needs some time to think about it you know we always do a day one and day two mm-hmm. um so then second day neve max and salita go to tia and they leave bianca behind because they want to go get some more answers kind of give bianca some time to think about what questions she does want to ask um tia i was gonna say chloe again <laughs> um so they get to Tia. She's she's very open. She's very, you know, very much willing to give information about what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, she said she was open throughout school about her sexuality. Her peers were accepting. Her parents have been very accepting. Um, but with this, they said they were like, so if all these people are so accepting, why do you have these fake profiles? And she then she said they felt like people wouldn't accept her. So that was like so yeah. obviously there's more to the story. It's, I think it's a mental like I feel like her she bullied herself. Mentally, right. It was a know. self image yeah. and how she portrayed herself. Yeah. At the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though she wasn't bullied, she still had these doubts about herself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when she was still going on about that, Selena kind of got really sassy with her for a second and like really def- was defending Bianca even though she wasn't there. Yeah. It, well, in in um, I'm gonna play devil's advocate or not devil's advocate. Um, I'm gonna take up for what's her name? What's her name? Tia, Tia on that one, because Tia was trying to explain something, and then um, God, I can't remember all these Salida. names. Salida, Salida, like said something, and then other girl took it the wrong way. So I don't think Salida meant it in the way that the girl yeah. took no, it. No, I don't think. I feel like it was kind of a test to kind of make sure, like, listen, you said you were bullied, but you weren't. Bianca really was. And she's like, and um, Tia was like, no, no, like, it was just myself, I thought. I was uh, I was yeah. bullying myself. Tia got defensive because she was yeah. like, you don't even know me. It has nothing to do with race. I'm half Mexican. No, <laughs> like, but I'm glad Salita said that because if she hadn't said that, we wouldn't find out from um, Tia, like, the story that the happened issue. in I freshman completely year. Agree. But yeah. then it's confusing because it's like, you got attacked your freshman year, but you said you weren't being bullied. And I think the reason why Salita said that is because she kept saying, oh, you know, I wasn't bullied. It's like, your story is not making sense. Right. I and you're like... using that as an excuse when this girl right here has actually been bullied and, you know, went through things with her mother, went through everything in her town. She's not using fake profiles. It's, it's not an excuse. I think that's right. I think that's why she got mad. Yeah. And I totally yeah. agree with everything she yeah. said. Yeah, I agree too. And I feel like Salita probably knew that there was something else going on here because yeah. she's like, oh, yeah, life is great and dandy. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I did it. Yeah. But obviously there is something there. She wasn't giving them anything substantial. And I think that was frustrating for Salita. And it was frustrating uh, for yeah. us as viewers. Right. Maybe, like, the freshman year thing was a big... Di- you know, when you're a victim of something that big, you don't want to admit it. And right. she probably didn't want to... Yeah, so like- let's just rewind for a second. Just So, so she did say, so the, for those listening, that there's a crime committed against her physically when she was 14. Um, she's a victim of sexual assault. Obviously, this is a very serious and emotional yeah. mm-hmm. and physical thing. And after that happened after that incident she dropped out of school gained a lot of weight all the stuff and that's when the fake profile started because she was de- very depressed um and it was kind of a distraction for her yeah so anything we want to add to i that? thought it was mm-hmm. i mean it's like i mean i don't i will never sit there and say someone wasn't a victim of sexual assault but it almost makes you question the reason why I'm questioning is because she was so, like, didn't want to tell Max and Neve, like, wouldn't tell them, and then went and told Bianca, but still did it on camera. No, I don't. I feel like I the don't. way she said it, though, you could tell 
You could she, tell a she, lie I think she's from just not opening tr- it. Yeah. Like, I don't think she was... She was having obviously having a very hard time opening up about it. It wasn't until Salita kind of got in, in her, her face, face about yeah. it that she was like, okay, well, you don't know why I'm actually, like, the way I am. Yeah. She's still that's got to really be hard. Open up about yeah, it. Like, she, she never just, really did. Yeah. She didn't want to open old wounds, you know, yeah. something that's serious. She had to drop out of school, you know? Uh, of course, she's I mean, got, that she, is the worst thing anyone has yeah. to go through, and I can totally understand why she would not want to be open about yeah. it and talk initially. about it on television but right. she did yeah. talk about it on tv well, she yeah, talked briefly it. like yeah. just mentioned yeah she just mentioned it and she never even like really said what happened but we all got the gist because yeah. you know we don't want her to have to spill okay her okay story. Yeah. okay I'll, I'll i'll give her that and but she told bianca <laughs> but she told bianca who Neve, give it to her girl <laughs> but the thing is it's like she doesn't know neve max and salita so yeah. it, it, but she is she cares about Bianca. She loves this girl. Like, she wants her to earn her trust back. Yeah. So, obviously, Bianca's there for answers. She's going to tell her in the best way she can. I just thought they wouldn't show it on TV. Like, they would have a little bit of conversation, and then she'd be like, oh, I understand. Like, I just... I, well, we need to know, too. We need to have some but, answers. Yeah, don't forget about us. Yeah. I know, but I just... I don't know. I just feel like some people... I mean, if she's comfortable telling the world that... I, I mean, she didn't go into details. No, it was, yeah. It was... Yeah. We got the same gist of what happened from crime committed against her physically to sexual assault. Like we got it. We I don't. I don't need to yeah. know anything I don't else about know that. Details. Yeah, I don't. So we don't have to put her back yeah. on the witness stand. Yeah, and exactly. Make her relive it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She'd be. Anyways, worried. let's move on from that. So she, they are still talking on the bench. Her and Bianca, and she does say she wants to earn her trust back. I thought she was very mature of mm-hmm. talking and very honest you know she can only tell her so much about what happened yeah. um but she wants to earn her trust back hopes that they can be friends and um and bianca just basically says she needs to get used to the idea of a different person being a, a different person not a different person but a different person yeah is what she said yeah. quote unquote go ahead Sterling. yeah you know, i got a good memory <laughs> whoa. sometimes whoa so, that's do, what one of them said oh yeah and then she said whoa it's yeah. crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys think that Bianca should let Tia back into her life? Yes. Yeah, I mean, she said it She said it perfectly kind of with Neve and Max that it's a friendship. So, I think that would start off as a friendship. Mm-hmm. See if she'll gain your trust again, you know. And if maybe, you know, she sticks to the truth this time. You guys have some video chats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I definitely think there could be a friendship there. Yeah. And if not, maybe something more. I think... I really, I'm kind of team Tia because I kind of, I kind of, you know, I want the best for her because for going through something so traumatizing and then having to figure out how to be yourself again after mm-hmm. something like you've obviously been violated in certain ways. Yeah. Um, so I want her to find love and hopefully she obviously really adores Bianca. Yeah. Otherwise she wouldn't have come back after a year, you know, just to talk to her. It shows though how crazy bad a tool the internet can be for like if you deal with such crazy problems like this you know seek help right. like not fake with a profiles. therapist don't yeah. go about the internet don't search for something on there that's not going to help you talking to a person one-on-one that's the best way right you know? i agree yeah it's so you- cliche like the the whole season's like, yeah. oh, I don't want to be myself. It's like equivalent to like someone cheating. Oh, one thing led to another. It's like, I'm yeah. tired of hearing that. Like, what that tells us nothing. Like, yeah. it's yeah. just so cliche at this point. Do you guys really think Bianca will give her Tia a second chance? I think Bianca I think is, she already is a very well, because she makes the comment when the girl's crying. She's like. I didn't feel bad, or I felt bad that I didn't feel bad. Well, that, that was, was the before. first, yeah, the that was first meeting. That's before she knew. Yeah, I but get I also, it, but you're not gonna change. Like she was hurt. But then, they had, then they had, then they had that conversation. So you're saying if someone did that to you, you could easily forget it the next day. That's what you're well, telling I'm, me right now. I'm she's not, not easily she, forgetting. That's why yeah. she's saying like I can start off with trying to be a friend because now I understand her. She said I got the answers I needed. Yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like Bianca already has a wall. Like, I do. Like, I feel like Bianca has a wall. Like, because when people hurt people, the people who are getting hurt, they put up a wall. Yeah. Like, and I know this. Like, well, Jesse, they, uh, are you being catfished? No. <laughs> of course not, because I don't trust they, anybody. They also, <laughs> they also talked about how Bianca is such a very... Um, she's, like, the least judgmental person mm-hmm. ever. She's very accepting, all this stuff. So I feel like you know years or whatever it is we don't know we didn't get to watch chatfish unfortunately so we don't know exactly um what the follow-up is but i feel like after time she can understand it build a friendship whatever because at the end of the day they still do have that 
connection bonding. they have from talking, right. from bonding. And we've seen that with a lot of other episodes mm -hmm. that yeah. they've ended up together or whatever. So, I mean, that's just catfish. Just how it goes. Getting screwed over online. I don't know. I guess I just have mixed feelings. I just, I don't, I like, don't get me wrong. I really liked Tia. I did. Yeah. I liked her as a person. I didn't think she did anything bad, like I said before. But seeing Bianca's side, to me, it would be hard to just open up to someone, like she said, a, a different person. Right. Well, I could totally yeah. see Bianca doing either. Like, yeah. I feel like either way, if she does accept Tia back into her life or if she doesn't, I can totally see why she would do either one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. News and gossip. <laughs> All right, let's get into some news and gossip. I think Kelly's got something for us. Yeah. After Buzz TV yeah. News. Well, there's just an uh, article on MTV.com saying, Don't tell the catfish. But Neve and Max know a clever iPhone trick to catch them. And uh, they said that nowadays when you take pictures, the uh, it's geotagged sometimes. And people don't even oh, yeah. know it's geotagged. So you could find out where they are without like them even knowing that they did that. Which is kind of creepy. And it makes me wonder about my pictures. So like on Facebook or Instagram? Yeah, on, yeah and it's on iPhones only. So actually, oh, it's oh, cool. Oh. I've got a droid, so I'm safe. Wait, what? so you're saying that they can see where you are even if you don't tag yourself at that location? Mm -hmm. You know how you like go, you can, on your iPhone, you can go to your photos. And then like if you zoom out, it separates it by location. Like, oh, these were taken in Culver City. Yeah. Or like these were yeah. taken in Italy. So like those pictures have that location on them like in the file so like if you send them like if i send you a picture you could probably figure out where i was exactly yeah. Yeah. that's scary because people aren't going to use that for like oh a catfish they're going to use that to stalk people yeah, yeah. and kill people. some people are going to die people. they're going to die oh god, oh, god. Oh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have mentioned that news of Sorry, oh, i need i need a new phone <laughs> Get a droid. Get a droid. Just don't take pictures. Guys. All right. Okay. Well, we kind of talked about predictions and what we hoped that Tia and Bianca would do. So, Kiki, where can the people find you? Kiki Ayers, K I K I A Y E R S. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Jesse Owen. Hey, I'm Kelly, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Holly Weirdo. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sterling Cates. Thank you guys so much for watching us this season. Fun season. Woo. And we'll see you next season. Next season. Season bye. four. Bye. 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 From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.